All right, so number one is in front. Yes. Front and center. It's the most important one. <laughs> it's number one. Yeah. <laughs> it should be it should be back over here on a Ford. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but then again, it's it's an eight. It's, we've had so many people write in about this distributor and tell yeah. us to ditch it. People hate it. People love it. And I mean, I'm kind of like it's already there. It's working. I'm not so sure I want to change it out. Yeah. But part of me is also like. The only thing I don't like about these is the big cap. Yeah, it's, it's horrible. You because can, you can't run a standard air cleaner. We're going to get yeah. into that when we get to that section of the detailing. But you can't put a standard air cleaner on because of the size of the cap. Now, they do have the DUIs with the small Ford cap, but they move the coil off. And then, and you're it's, still, it's the, still the then it just looks like a Ford coil. It looks like a Ford coil. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what's the point? Yeah. Um, what we're going to be talking about today, though, folks, we're going to be going into uh, putting plug wires on this. And I know we have a set of MSDs that are already on here. Now these are not custom cuts and what we're dealing with today is talking about doing the Ford uh, wiring loom system along with a set of custom cuts or do you want to do Motocraft wires and be done with it? Because you know, they came that way. They work. Could be a thing. Yeah. First thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to talk to you about how valve covers can be a real issue with what we're working on. So I'm going to go grab those and we're going to get busy. <coughs> And right, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the problem you can run into when you're using the bolts that we got from National Parts Depot. And it's the silver one. This is an original factory uh, valve cover bolt for small block 302. And you'll notice there is a distinct difference in depth. What I'm going to have to do is Cam's going to come in. He's going to bring me the valve cover. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what's going on with that. Now, these valve cover bolts, the longer ones, are actually for the later valve covers that Ford did even in the really cool power by Ford valve covers. And by the way, why hasn't somebody done this valve cover? We got more Cobra valve covers in the world than anybody can ever put on a car. But if someone would reproduce the power by Ford valve covers, I think these things would haul because I love these. I put these on almost every small block I do. They're the best looking valve cover Ford did. They only did them in I think 85 and 86. Uh, so. I really prefer these, but the problem is on the early versions of the valve covers, this is actually a drop, whereas on the later ones they raised it up, which pulls the bolt up into a correct position for these bolts. These are actually set up for the shorts, but Ford made the ones with the stands on them uh, to go in this location with the shorter thread size, and good luck finding a set of those. So that's going to be your problem. Now we're going to show you how to get around that using these. It's not going to be pretty, but we're going to show you anyway. All right, so we have a mess here and we are moving. So there's all this stuff behind me. But what I want to talk to you about is you can take and modify these bolts in order to work with the thinner valve covers. But what you're going to have to do is to cut this end off. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting them in my bench vise here. Getting that sucker nice and tight. I'm using my hacksaw to cut the tips off. Now after I get the tips cut off, I'm going to take them over to my grinder and I'm going to grind down the edges just a little bit because there's always a little bit of a tab when you hacksaw these like there is right here. All right, now I've got this one cut down. I only have to do this 12 times. <laughs> and then take it over to the grinder and grind them down. Uh, it's really just that simple. Luckily, there's enough depth in the head for this to work. Um, and it should be better if we were using like the aluminum valve covers like I was showing you a little earlier. But right now, Cam is gonna be talking to you a little bit about some other stuff while I go grind these down. All right, while Jeff is dying a death by a thousand cuts, I'm going to go ahead and pull the spark plug wires off. Now on a small block Ford, as many of you probably know, the left bank when you're standing at the front of the car is cylinders one through four, and then the right bank is five through eight. On a small block Chevy, the right front cylinder is cylinder one, and then it flops to the other bank, cylinder two, cylinder three, cylinder four, and down the line. So we already have our cylinders marked on the distributor, so there's no real need to keep these organized. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start pulling wires. Right, that one goes there, that one, that one, and this one. 
And when you have your fancy dandy spark plug wire boots made out of zip ties, you can pull them all at one time. So I'm going to go ahead and get the other bank done, which is way, way harder because of all the stuff that's on this engine. All right, now we're gonna talk about the mounting procedure that we're gonna be using. We're using these two bolts. Now, if you get the kit and you're not aware of how this needs to be set up, when Ford originally did this, they had a clip that went here that the loomed the wires from the distributor out to the first bolt position for four wires, then to the bolt position for two wires here. It's that simple. But man, it made a difference in the way this thing looked. Before, Ford would always carry the, valve, the uh, wires over the top of the valve covers. Now they pulled them around the front side here so you could see that Powered by Ford logo. Now later on, they got rid of this kind of a look. I wish they hadn't, but it really makes for a nice setup on pretty much any classic car you're working on if you're going for an aftermarket look in the engine bay. Now I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about plug wires. Now on this, we've got two sets of plug wires. We got one that we got from Summit, which is their wiring system that they offer. This is a custom cut. It uses the same style boot that Ford used originally. Uh, in fact, this looks more like an original boot than the Motocraft wire ends do now. This and this, this is more like the original. This is more like an aftermarket look. Um, but you can, if you're running a small block Ford, go with a stock wire from Motocraft. They still offer them. I'm not sure what the length on these is going to be. But if you're working with a pre-1982 and you're setting this kind of a deal up, you may have to play around with your wire positions in order to get everything to lay out really nice. But this is an option that's about 35 to 50 bucks at the auto parts store. This is something you're going to order in from Summit and this runs right around 80 some odd dollars with shipping to us here in the Aiken Augusta area. So what we're going to do now is Cam is going to show you how to set up the custom cuts. We'll be <clears throat> returning these to the auto parts store because we couldn't <clears throat> use them. It's nice whenever you can just kind of borrow things. We paid for it, but we'll get our money back. I probably shouldn't have said that on screen. All right, so we are here at the bench vise. You can do this in car, but this set of spark plug wires came with this little tool that is used to cut them, which is very handy. Uh, you can do this with just a razor blade and by hand, but you risk nicking your conductor. Now this needs to be stripped five eighths of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this flush with the end. I'm going to start this cut with an X-Acto knife, just so I know exactly where it needs to be. And I'm going to spin the spark plug wire in this hole. It's going to let me put a little cut in it. I'm going to pull this back out and use a pair of dikes just to get it to the correct gross length. Now I'm going to stick this back in and I set that tape line to right where I want the end of my boot to be. So we're going to be right about there. So now I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and be very, very careful not to cut that center wire. I'm going to rotate this. And I'm just going to slowly start cutting into it. And you can typically hear a difference in the knife when you're cutting the different layers of insulation. So don't go too deep because if you nick that center copper, you are done with this wire. All right, so once you have stripped it correctly, you will end up with something like that. And now what you do is you take it and you put your boot on. As you can see, this is very hard to push. So what you do if you take dielectric grease or Dawn dish soap works as well. Just take a little dab. Try not to touch the copper with it, but it doesn't really matter. All right, so I'm trying to fish the conductor up this boot. So the conductor is actually coming straight up, which will allow the wire to curl up. Right now it is pushed to the side. is not wanting to cooperate. So I'm gonna pull this back a little bit. There it goes. Now the conductor is coming up the boot. 
try and push this back in. Because I'm sweating, it's very fun to push this when it's covered in dawn. And by the way, it really doesn't matter if you're, you just, the, the dawn is gonna be the same thing as the dielectric grease. This is the worst part of yeah. self cuts. Yes, So having I'm, to do this. Such a nice man, <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm gonna go get lunch. Yeah, thank you. This part will take you hours. The end product is worth it. <laughs> you never know that a piece of wire can be so infuriating. Regerts. <laughs> Custom cuts will be fun, they say. They are fun. I've done them so many times. <laughs> I always forget how <laughs> this part is. <laughs> All right, we're good now. Good way to go, team. <laughs> so this is like pregnancy because every time we do this, we forget how much this part sucks. Yeah. You know how pregnant women will say, oh, I will never have another baby. And like a year and a half later, they want to have another baby. Same thing. Because they forgot. But yeah, but it's not as painful. I will say that if you're a lady and you're watching this and you've had a baby, go ahead and leave a comment about how much worse it is than this. But this sucks. All right. Well, now that we've got our wire fished through, so you take your conductor, you fold it over, and then you put your terminal end like so. So that when you crimp it, the two ears that you crimp are not pinching on the conductor. If you do the conductor on the top, you run the whole thing and you will have a car that runs like crap. All right, so I have a fancy set of crimpers. Most of your standard auto parts store crimpers can do it. They suck. Don't waste your time. Spend some money if you're gonna do this a lot and get a good set. These are from Matco, I overpaid. Don't be like me. These are the same set that Jeff got from Astro for half the price, but they do not have the spark plug. Matco has spark plug connectors. And oftentimes what I like to do, because it's hard to hold all of these at the same time, I like to bend these down and preload them into the crimper because this is ratcheting. So you just have to start it like that, get one click in, fold your conductor into it, and then crimp it until it goes no more. And what you are left with is a good spark plug wire. You should not see any rips on the insulation around the crimp. If you do, it'll probably run, but it'll eventually get water or you might start having issues in there. All right, so next up is just pull this back out. You wanna rotate the wire to make sure that this is facing down as that will go onto the cap. So this needs to rotate this way. So as I'm pulling, I'm pulling counterclockwise to kind of force that rotation into it. All right, and we are good to go. Only eight more. Yay. There you go. Job well done. It, <laughs> <laughs> it is a very nice looking job. I mm -hmm. mean, to me, that's so much neater than what you would have with them coming out over the top of the valve. Yeah, code. going everywhere in a mess of spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, that, that just neatens everything up. With the custom cut wires, it gives you the opportunity to really honestly neaten everything up and make yeah. it look 100% better. Mm -hmm. Route it exactly how you want it. There's one that I would like to change, which is actually a cylinder one, <laughs> but there's not much I can do with it at this point. Yeah, I mean, I, there's things that you can always do and go in and fix, but I mean, that to me is just such a cleaner look yeah. than what you're gonna get with anything else that you can do. Even the stock wires, there's a good possibility that those are just a little bit longer or shorter yep. than what they're gonna need to be. Yeah. While the motorcrafts will work for you, they aren't necessarily gonna be your best option for this. Um, if you wanna take the time, this is how you do it right. Yeah, the only the, thing that bugs me about it is, is with custom cuts, the, it's more money than the motorcraft yep. wires are. Yep. You, you're doing all the work more money for more work <laughs> your work yeah because yeah. <laughs> you actually you can get the non-custom cuts from summit cheaper than the custom than cuts. the custom cuts and i guess it's because it includes a tool and yeah there's, there's aspects extra there. stuff yeah you get parts that you're going to put in a box and put on a shelf <laughs> never use 20 years. Like a friend of mine told me about refrigerators you have all the 
cool mm. adjustable shelves and stuff <laughs> that you set one time and you never look yeah. at again. No. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Check out the Patreon account. At the $10 a month level, you get monthly meetings with me. You also get uh, content from us that is video content that is not available to anybody else. It's only for the Patreon guys. And then also with that, with the meetings, you, you meet other people. There's probably 15 or 20 folks that show up on the monthly to uh, visit with me and us do tech tips and things like that. Really a lot of fun to do. Then also, I want you to subscribe to the channel. YouTube has messed with the algorithms to such a degree that channels like mine, that are the smaller number channels, and I mean, we're fairly large at 83 some odd thousand when this airs, but we're still small. And at a certain level, YouTube has really kind of cut off notifying you of content like ours that you're interested in watching. So if you subscribe to the channel, you get the notification from that in your email box. Make sure you click the bell for notification that is like, hey, I want to be notified of everything that Auto Resto Mod slash Manic Mechanic does. If you do that, you'll get it in your email box and you'll know immediately when we're coming at you, which is generally every week, unless I get sick or he gets sick or we're moving. Hopefully not again. <laughs> Never. I mean, maybe I will, but I'll probably be moving in a casket toward the hole in the ground. It's someone else's problem. Move yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Let's see the kids out there with a match and a gas and gasoline light and everything on fire. Mm. Oh, that's depressing, but it is actually kind of funny. Um, so anyway, that's it for this week, folks. Be kind to each other, love on each other, treat each other nice, and we'll see you next time on Auto Rest of Mod. I actually would rather be cremated. Cremated with your stuff, Egyptian Ooh. stuff. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> That's an idea. Yeah. I could have you set the place on fire, put the body inside. You'd probably get arrested. Hmm. Who's going to claim the insurance? Do you know Deanna's going to claim the insurance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The wife's going to get the insurance. <laughs> yeah, You're not gonna, getting diddly. Yeah, nothing. You might. I'm going to get the cat. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have the cat. <laughs>